right, so we are live and online. So welcome, everyone. I am so excited to have you all on the Missions to Millions Idea Accelerator series. The series is broken into two parts, and we're going to talk about those parts. And um, I'm so happy to be your host. This was really a passion project for me. One of my clients inspired me to actually write this book based on work that I've been doing for um, over 20 years now. And I'm really excited to have all of you willing to come on board and take an idea and play with me for a couple months and really rediscover something that's brought so much joy, so much fulfillment to my life, and has made a huge difference for me. And so I'm looking forward to making that same difference for you. So just a few logistical instructions. This is a recorded and live session. And the good thing is we have, like I said, about 60 people total all over the world registered in all different places, so we are going to record this. Everyone who attends and everyone who's registered gets the recording, so if you want to watch something back, feel free to do so. If any of you are having feed quality problems, you can always use your telephone over the microphone, and if you look up at the upper left-hand side of your menu bar at the top of your screen, you can press the phone button, and it will give you a phone number option versus your computer option, and you can switch between the two. Questions, look on your lower left-hand side, you can go in the chat box, and you can send them to everyone, or you can send them to me directly. Now, we have another little thing. There's a button on the right-hand side called My Mood. If you would like to raise your hand and you have a question as we go along, you can just click on the My Mood button, and there's actually a choice to raise hand, and it will put a big white hand right in front. I'll see it really bright. And uh, Deanna will keep in touch with your questions. And if it's appropriate for us to answer them at that time, we will. Otherwise, be assured she's writing them down and we will cover them. Webcams, we're going to have a little bit of fun here in a minute. And I'm going to have you turn those on and off. But if you look up on, again, on your menu bar, up on the cam side, you're going to see a cam button. So everyone who's on the phone who has a webcam, go ahead and hit your cam button. And you're going to see really quickly yourself live and broadcast if you'd like to. So anyone who's got a cam, feel free to hit your cam button right now. And uh, you can wave and say hi to everyone. Hey, I see faces. Nice to see everybody. There we go. Hi. And so we're going to have the cam option available for the entire course. So those of you who may not have been ready tonight know that you can go ahead and practice. Hey. And we'll get to see everyone. All right, so you can hit your cam button again, and you're welcome to it any time you ask a question if you want to be audio and visual to hit your camera button. Uh, last but not least, um, we do have live support. Like I said, Kate's babysitting through the call. So if you have any troubles, hit the help button. We'll be happy to help you. So it is time to dive in because I know you all are giving me your life energy tonight. So let's start with a quick poll. And I actually thought it was so much fun, these new online meetings, I can actually ask you questions. So how many of you on the phone tonight have succeeded in making an idea happen? You've got one, at least one notch in your belt that says, yep, I did it, I can do it, and I'm here to do it in a bigger, better, and more consistent way. So as you can see, the good news is all of us have had success. Amazing. All right, thank you, everybody. So now let's take the flip side of that question. How many of you have ever experienced the not so nice side, which we'll call it the failure side of making an idea happen? Anyone? I know I had to click yes on that one too. I would love to say 100% of my ideas have happened in my life, but that's not necessarily the case. So it looks like we've all experienced both sides of the coin. So what I would like to say first and foremost is a big thank you. And since I know I have friends on the phone and I'm watching the recording back from all over the world who speak many, many languages, I've put thank you up in every language I could find on the uh, images, but I really want to thank you for taking this time with me. I'm asking over the next couple months 
for you to spend with me um, about six hours of your life. And I know you only get so many ticks on the clock. We all don't know how long we have here. And so I feel really blessed that you've chosen to spend the time here with me tonight. So I really want to thank and acknowledge you. And I want to promise you that I am committed to delivering you the best possible outcome on your idea. The whole purpose of the Idea Accelerator course is to literally give you supercharge in your engine. Some of you may have bought some of you may have not bought the book, but this course was actually created before the book existed. So the great thing is whether or not you've read the book, you're going to move your idea, or if you have lots of ideas, I have 147 now last time I counted that I'm working on, you can keep moving more and more ideas forward faster and more effectively. So for those of you who have not actually worked with me, um, one of the things just to think about is what, what's my credentials, right? Why am I doing this? Well, here's the cool thing. I grew up an engineer. Recovering chemical engineer is what I joke about myself, and I've been really blessed. I've got, gotten to work with a lot of great companies. I've gotten to work with sports teams, the U.S. military, and one of the things that constantly frustrated me was the fact that I'd worked in 50 different business sectors, all levels of the government, and I would come up with these really great engineered ideas is what I call them. And at some organizations, they do great. and some organizations, they would fail miserably. And it really, really bothered me. And um, the cool thing, though, was what I figured out was, and it was really chilled as I put the book together for you all, was the fact that no matter which type of organization I went into, nonprofit, government, the process of making the idea happen and happen successfully is the same. That is the great news because for those of you on the phone, the one thing that every organization has in common is that we have human beings sitting in it. And so what I'm going to teach you is a powerful framework, and I have used it successfully. I've actually trained almost, I think, and counting now, 8,000 people. I've worked with hundreds of teams across the U.S., and I've worked with companies you know, from one-person startups to Fortune 1,000 companies and global organizations and the framework works. So that's the great news. So one of the things I was curious just to get some feedback on how you felt about things is why do you think that some ideas succeed in one organization but they fail in another? And so you can, I gave you some choices up there. If you want to say I don't know, obviously I'm going to give you the answer here in a minute, but um, why do you think that ideas can succeed or fail? And I have the extra smart crowd tonight, so you probably are all seeing that it's a lot and it's all people related. And you are 100% right that all of the above, culture, leadership, and people can all drive or derail an idea. So at the bottom of the, and at the end of the day, you can't engineer humans. And so for the first half of my career, I would come up with solutions, and 50% of the time they'd work great, and 50% of the time I'd like to say not so great. And for those of you who haven't read the book, um, some of you have probably, uh, some of you I know because I know your names up on the screen have seen me live. No, I share a story about I really did think I could engineer humanity, and then in 2002, I had my first child, and he had lots of diagnoses that were very overwhelming. And then my second child showed up, and um, she would stop breathing on a routine basis, and I had to deal with the, the trauma of, you know, resuscitating my child. And it didn't matter what I did, and I kept trying to fix, fix, fix um, these things that the doctors were giving me. But at the end of the day, what I realized was, I really had to get into their space and the uniqueness of them. And so all the ideas that I had, if I wanted them to happen, they involved them. So we're going to talk about that phenomena through this class, and you're going to be able to master it. You're going to be able to build a base of followers, and you're going to get people, even your biggest resistors in some cases, able to be behind your idea, whether or not they believe in your idea or not. People can be behind your idea and support you, whether or not they think it's going to happen, that's the amazing thing. And we're going to talk about how to do that 
make that happen. The other thing I really want to thank you guys for is I have a personal mission. In um, 2020, I turned 50 years old. And you being on this course and everyone who's bought the book um, is allowing me to achieve my personal vision. And I want 20 million people to have their ideas mission accomplished by the year 2020. So again, a second thank you before we dive in to just say thank you for being one of those 20 million and moving forward with me on this process. So the, a couple of you had asked me, because some of you registered directly for my course, and some of you came to the course through buying the book. So those of you who just registered for the course, the book is on Amazon. Amazon officially sent me the notice today that it's on hardcover and on Kindle. So if you do want the book in hardcover, you can get it. And then um, also Deanna will send you all just the PDF version of it to make sure that you all have it handy and on your computer. So as we go through the course in the coming weeks, you can have it on your iPhone, you can have it on your computer, but if there's anything you need to refer to, it's readily available to you. All right, so what if one course, this course, could change your entire life? So what if I could take you and have you skip 12 years of hard life lessons that myself and other people who work in the category of idea generation have to learn? What if every single one of you on this phone is wearing a pair of glasses that are colored with your viewpoint, but you're blind to them, and so you have things going well and not well all over your life? And you may be able to, after this course, in fact, I'm 100% sure, because so far I haven't had anyone say no to the question after working with me, you're going to know what, not only what color your glasses are, but how to take action in the face of that color and make sure you make happen what you want to make happen. So all of you have your My Mood button on the upper right. So how many of you would like to make all of your great ideas happen? So I want to see any hands up on my right little attendee screen. You should be able to go click on My Mood and raise your hand. So what if out of this course, if you basically say, I want to make an idea happen, I'm promising you if you follow my framework that all your great ideas happen. Great. I'm glad it looks like I have most of you on board for that one. So what if I could help you identify all of your baggage and have you be able to do it outside of this course every time you have an idea come up? Because the reality is for you all, you have baggage on all of your ideas. I would love to say you have some that you can just go fly at, but unfortunately the human condition gives us what I call baggage. Some people call them little voices, some people call them views or perceptions, but the minute you have an idea, you get this little voice in your head and it says, I'm scared of it, or I don't deserve this. And some of you have a couple of baggage against an idea. and then. Some people have bigger baggage, and then some people have a grand behemoth. And one of the things we're going to talk about in this course is the seven most common views or baggage that you're going to carry that will stop you in the idea realm from making your idea happen. We're going to identify them. We are going to clear them. You are going to move forward. So the mental barriers that have been in what I call your blind spot. You know, we have what our conscious is, what we're thinking about, and then we have all this stuff in the back that we forget about that we've picked up since about age four. We're going to have you and empower you to grab those, push them forward, clear them out so they don't get you stopped. The next thing we're going to do, you have a power plant in your mind. People always ask me how I'm high energy all the time and I do 200 things in a row, and it's because I've hooked up to this great power source called the idea mind. And I'm always excited. Every day I have an idea come up and because I've mastered this process, I have a really positive attitude towards making things happen in my life. And so it constantly energizes me versus de-energizes me. And so in this course, I'm going to give you a way to reconnect, not just temporarily, but permanently for the rest of your life to that idea power plant that is your mind to give you a source of unlimited energy and inspiration. 
The other thing we're going to do is framework. So it would be really, really great if you could walk out of this course and no matter what your idea is, you have a framework that you can replicate. And you could replicate this framework if you're, even if you're just trying to get your husband to do a date night with you, whether you want to start a new company or whether you're navigating huge bureaucracy in a government and you have to get a new piece of legislation passed. The framework we're going to learn in this course and that I'm going to help you through is replicable. And like I said, I've proved it out. I've played with it, organizations large and small. It's based on the humanness of making ideas happen with a touch of head and technology in it. So I can guarantee you if you follow the framework, it will work. And then last but not least, how many of you would like help? And when I say help, we don't make ideas happen in a vacuum. So I want to help you build a network I want you to connect to this network. We have this great group of people who are wanting to make ideas happen. And bottom line is, ideas can't do it alone. So if you're ready to get going, that's my promise to you for the investment of six hours of your life with me. What you do beyond it and how much you take it on is your choice. But baby steps are okay. If you only promise me five minutes a day to work on the idea of your choice, I am happy with that because you can work miracles in five minutes a day, and we're going to talk about that. So let's get going. So before Christmas, I thought it would be a great Christmas present to everyone taking the course that we do two things. We take your baggage out, we recharge your batteries, and I help you capture and crystallize at least one idea that you want to work on. So we're going to do that for the three the courses before Christmas, including this one. Part two, after Christmas, after you're getting you know, off your vacations and everything, our New Year's resolutions are cranking forward, we're going to have three classes that build your idea in a very practical and real way. And you're going to be able to use not just me, but the team on the phone for suggestions and ideas. So it's going to be lots of fun. And then I love to give bonuses, and it's Christmas. It's my favorite time of year for gifts. And so I have two bonuses. Some of you know about them because you've talked to me. Some of you haven't. But bonus number one is whatever your idea is, you're going to email m 2 mthrivalcompanycom and you're going to get a free phone call with me because I really want to help you gel. And the idea can be as simple as I want to have the best Christmas ever, to I want to launch a new business or I want to, so ideas big or small, you're just going to have to pick one for this course and do it. And then the extra bonus, and um, I'm really excited about this one, is Mission to Millions was book one of a three-part series for me. So what I'm going to do in each call after this one is I'm going to teach you practices out of my next two books. So you're going to not just get the sneak preview of it, but I have some really amazing practices on how to change your own behavior as well as how to lead others. And so I'm going to actually give you samples because um, I'm working on those books right now for the publisher. So I'm going to give you that extra bonus. You're going to get supercharged because Mission of Millions was one. It was actually supposed to be a giant book, and the publisher recommended I split it into three. So I want you to get everything. So I'm going to give you that extra bonus too. So let's dive in and talk about the power of making an idea happen. I truly believe that the energy of the mind is the essence of the life. And the minute we lose disconnection and we disconnect from that energy, that's when we start getting depressed. That's when we start losing hope. That's when we start gaining weight. That's when we start eating for comfort food. That's when we disconnect from our families. And so for me, Doing this work and helping my clients, whether they are corporations down to individuals, reconnect to their mind, I know I'm creating happier people who are going to have an amazing life. So I want you to think back to when you were a child. Think back when anything was possible in your mind. Think back when you could make things fly and you could have grand adventures and you could propose things. Now, Unfortunately, in almost every culture I've been in now uh, has proven out the same. We start with this huge enthusiasm, huge enthusiasm for life and ideas and everything else. And um, fortunately, 
that's not what happens. Um, we take them to our parents, we take them to our friends, we take them to our siblings, and we get the, that's nice, but in the real world, or no, we can't do that now, or no, we don't have the money, we don't, you know, a lot of life pushes back on us with a big N-O. And so unfortunately, our acculturation is to do what I call idea stagnation. And so what I need to do for you is I need to flip this triangle to a different model, and I need you to be able to catch it in your own head and not go down this path. Because what normally happens for most people, 99 plus percent of the time, and the statistics actually show 99.9% .9 of ideas fail to launch in a real way in the world, you get really excited, you think about it, you might think about it a little bit more, maybe take a few actions, then you start hitting resistance. People diss your idea, you know, you get pushed back, life happens, you get busy, and then you have the sad thinking about the idea, which turns into resignation, and then you quit. And so I call this the idea stagnation model. And it, unfortunately, in most societies, this is how we're raised, this is how we're acculturated, our jobs, our families, they wish the best for us, but this is actually the default they push us into. And so we end up in what I call a survival state or survival decision making. So one of the things I need you to start getting cognizant of each and every day is anytime you're feeling that ugh, feeling, I need you to start discerning whether you're in survival or what I call a thrival state of being. So if you're feeling like self-preservation, fear, turf protection, you're waiting for the push, you're going to react, you're not going to take action, don't want to do risky things, um, you're looking at your past things and saying, oh, it didn't work then, not going to work now, realize that that's survival space and ideas cannot happen in that space. So we're going to shift that for you. Survival space feels much different. You're looking at the future, you're looking at growth, you're looking at possibility, you're getting in action, you're open to pushing the limits to a point of actually making yourself and others uncomfortable. It's collaborative, it's engaging, you're building teams, you're having conversations, you're talking to people, and it's very future driven. So what I want to do is just take a moment here on the phone. So. Everyone who's here, we're going to take a pause. I'm actually going to play music. And I want you to think about one idea and just one. It can be big or small. I don't care. But I want you to think about one aspect of your life that you have something you want to make happen. And then just think about are you in survival or are you in thrival around that idea? And how does it feel? because we're going to do a quick exercise. And so if you can hold on one minute while I cue up the music, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. It'll feel like an eternity on a webinar. But just think about what idea you want to work on with me, and then where are you on the scale of survival, starting down here to thrival. All right? So thanks, everyone. Take your 30 seconds here starting now. All right, so hold on to that idea for me, please. And let's make a decision from this point forward that we're, not, we're gonna thrive, not just survive. So, I need to have you all master a practice. One of the really interesting things when I go into companies where I'm dealing with there's a lot of depression or a lot of discomfort or a lot of things just happening that aren't pleasant, one of the things I can see there is they're disconnected from their visionary self. And their great ideas aren't even making it out of their head. 
And so what I want you all to master tonight, and I want you to practice it, because all good things come from practice. And you can read all of the theory in the world on ideas, but I promise you if you don't adopt these practices, it will never become a habit in your head. So close your eyes and just remember the last time you had an idea happen in a really amazing way. And think about the energy that came from that idea happening. Think about the joy you felt when you shared it. Now, switch gears and think about time an idea didn't happen. What happened? Who crushed that idea? Who took that away? Did it hurt? And why did you let it go when that happened? Why did you give up on that idea? So what I'd like to put forward, y'all, is all of our ideas go through phases. First phase is the love affair. It's glorious, passionate, exciting, playful. We feel like a million bucks. Then we start talking about the idea to people, and it gets confusing, challenging. We get resistance. Barriers come up. We hit overload. And then I hit what we call the breakup phase. Reality sets in. The romance of the idea is over. Disillusionment, impossibility, frustration, it goes bye-bye. I need to give you a practice that allows you to break that cycle. And what I want to do is give you eight practices so that instead of that inverted triangle I showed you earlier, I put you in a growth model. And in a growth model, what happens is every idea you have gets anchored. And once it's anchored, I can help you work through committing to it, communicating it, getting rid of your baggage around it, and then we get into the head part of it. We plan it, we build a team, we build a case, we build a fan base, we take action, done, every single time. So Napoleon Hill has one of my favorite quotes on my anchoring practice, and I actually use it as a kickoff for this practice. First comes the thought, then the organization of that thought into ideas and plans and transformation of those plans into reality. The beginning, as you will observe, is in your imagination. So how do we capture that imagination? You are going to do three things from this day forward. You're going to continue to let your imagination run wild. That's great, OK? But there's two things you're going to add in order to make sure that instead of 99.9% .9 of your ideas ending up gone, think of what your life would be like if even you hit that 1% of them happening. You're going to imagine, you're going to write, and you're going to read. Now, I like to make things easy to remember, and I call that the AAA plan. Awareness that you're actually having an idea and not letting yourself kill it before it gets out of your head, anchoring it by writing it down, and taking action on that idea. And we're going to talk about the power of five-minute action. So every hour of every day, you have some great idea. Some are big and some are small. Most of you, if I bet, and I'm a good betting woman, and I've interviewed thousands of people on this, currently have no way to capture their idea. So you have a homework assignment tomorrow, and you have a choice on how you deliver on this homework assignment. But my homework assignment for you is that for one day, every idea that comes into your mind, and if you have to set a beeper on your phone, whatever you have to do to inspire your great mind to generate that idea and write it down, you're going to do that just for 24 hours. And then I'm asking you to actually submit it to me. Now, it is your choice to submit it or not. I will tell you how you play 
and how you participate in this will determine how much you get out of it. So I invite you, and I'll remind you, I have Deanna, who's going to be your little conscience, she's just going to send you things and say, did you send this to Elizabeth? Try it out. Do it. It's your choice to do or not do. But I recommend you do it because one of the things that you'll notice is, for those of you who haven't been capturing your ideas or been killing them very quickly, you might notice day one you only capture five or ten ideas. Day two, all of a sudden, you've got 30. Day three, you've got 50. And the really cool thing about this day and age is all of us have amazing little devices. And when I say amazing little devices, I'm talking about this because this has become my little idea brain. You have a voice recorder on it. You can voice to text anything. So I keep all my lists just by dictating them into my phone. No matter where I'm at, good idea comes into my head, dictate it. I've got a little document that sits on my phone. It can be as easy as that. You could also just grab a notebook, call it your idea journal, have it with you. It can be tiny and fit in your purse. It can be big and go in your briefcase, your choice. But what I'm going to give you with this practice is an awareness of what's going on in your head and starting to capture it. Because unfortunately, our culturation has us kill 99% of the ideas in our head, and we never write it down. In order to anchor an idea, you have to write it down. Now, remember I said you have that energy power plant that's going around in your head that you haven't connected to and you don't connect to enough? Here's the cool thing. Every Sunday, put a little reminder on your calendar. and read every idea that you've written down. Look for any limiting words you've put in there that make it like it's not going to happen. Cross them out and read it again. When you feel energy off reading your idea, you've got it. Share it with someone and declare it, whether they support it or not. Your idea stays in your head. You won't implement it until you share it. Post it and keep sharing it. That is your little idea engine. And the other important thing is, and I recommend this, is if you have friends, family members, coworkers, people who really support you and who you are and you want to be, they're the ones to share it with first. So you can build that muscle and get comfortable with your idea and also be ready because you will get resistance and barriers coming. So. The last little thing I want you to practice this month is I want you to pick one, one, only one idea. And every day I want you to take five minutes. I'm only asking for five, 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 five. I'm stressing five because all of you have five minutes in your day that you can take action on your idea. I don't care how small an action it is. So here's an example. I want to master golf. Okay, that seems like a pretty big thing. I'm in my well into my 40s, never played golf before. So what's five minutes of action I could take on mastering golf? I could get on YouTube and watch a five-minute video on golf. So that's how simple it could be for five minutes of action. Your five minutes of action could be you're going to call someone and share the idea with one person or send an email or do a little bit of research. You would be amazed at how many ideas, projects, programs, and business initiatives I have launched on five minutes a day. So try it out. And then I would love you all to email me as you've had successes and frustrations in this that we can share and discuss and I can support you as you master this. All right, so your homework is going to be that you're going to keep an idea journal, and we're going to, we haven't done it yet, but I'm going to say create some goals and actions and take actions on them. We'll refine it later, but I just want to get you in the practice of capturing your ideas and getting in action and moving them forward. Now, I'm going to give you a bonus practice. So I'm love to read articles, research studies, and everything else. I, my husband jokes I'm a frustrated doctor. Uh, I'm an engineer, but I love anything having to do with the human mind and medical. And what was fascinating to me is they've done a study to show that we're so bombarded with negative news and information that our brains actually change and cannot absorb nor see the positive any longer. 
They've proven this. They've done multiple studies now showing that our brains are changing to only see the negative. But there's a bonus practice I'm going to give you that counteracts what's happening in our culture, and it's called daily gratitude. So every night before I go to bed, and if I'm too tired, I do it first thing when I get up in the morning, I write my gratitude. I've done it for years. And um, it's been an amazing gift because A, no matter how bad my day is, I can find something to be grateful for so I don't get stuck in a funk. And the second thing is, I have now years of gratitude journals that I can go back and read anytime I am having a bad day or I do lose perspective or I'm feeling deflated around my idea and see what an amazing life I have had no matter what ups and downs or things that have happened. This practice has been proven to counteract the changes that are happening in your brain because of everything you see on TV and the internet. So I'm giving you a weapon that's been proven to counteract and make sure that your brain can stay in that survival space that I've described and out of survival thinking, which is guaranteed to slow your idea, if not kill it. All right, so we are at 741, and our next class is next week. So what we're going to do next week, and today was a lot of talking, next week is going to be you participating, but I wanted to set the framework for the course is baggage. So remember I showed you some of us have a one or two bags around our ideas. Every idea is going to have a different amount of baggage depending on what it is and what you're taking on. If you have any questions about what we covered today, we can share them here. I'm also going to unmute you all. Uh, so if anyone just wants to have any comments, but we're going to get into your head next week. We're going to take inventory. We're going to clean house. And uh, the great bonus out of this will be you will go into Christmas in a better space. So whatever your relatives, your coworkers, all that stress gets thrown at you, your space is going to be clear doing this with us. So I look forward to seeing you all next Tuesday. I look forward to lightening your load. And at this point, I am going to switch to give you guys the option of unmuting yourselves. So any questions, folks? Any comments? Ah, Clay had a question. What app do I use for speech to text? Great. I have two apps. One, I just use, uh, I have an iPhone, so I do use the Siri app a lot. But my other preferred one, because I have it on my computer and actually it helps me dictate my books and other things so I don't get carpal tunnel, it's called Dragon Dictation does cost a nominal amount, but I have the app on my phone and I have um, the actual software on my computer. And I find that one quite accurate and it works for me really well. Thanks, Clay. Any other questions? So if any of you would like your own idea journal and one in hard copy that you can write in, if you email Deanna at m to m and so it's M, the number two, and M at thrivalcompany.com. Your address will be happy to send you an idea journal in the mail that you can keep with you. That's my little gift for tonight so that you can practice the practice. Ah, is there a reward for more than 100 ideas a day? Whew, absolutely yes. But then the reward is you get to practice, practice, practice. As I mentioned, I have 147 active ideas uh, myself that I'm working on. And I actually have prioritized some I work on daily, some I work on weekly. And then I even have my idea table of stuff that I'm not working on now, but I don't want to forget the idea. And um, I actually launched a real estate investment business off a tabled idea. I have another um, company idea that I'm actually looking for backers for, but not really working on too much because I'm busy with other things. So the great thing is if you capture all your ideas and you start sorting and keeping them, they don't have to be right now, but they're still great ideas and you can find the right time and the right time shows up when you're reviewing them and keeping them in your mind. <laughs> Thanks, Clay. 
So uh, Deanna asked a question, do you keep different lists? So I um, have just my dump list that I actually dictate into my phone. When I copy that list, I actually, I'm an Excel wonk, I'm an engineer, I grew up on Excel. Um, I actually have three different lists they go into. I have a personal list, I have a professional list, and I have a bucket list. And so I do actually copy my ideas into the different lists and I prioritize them to the ones I'm working on, ones I'm going to work on later, and ones that I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I just captured the idea. And um, by the way, some of your great ideas you will gift to other people. I had two ideas, no time to start it as a business, told some other people about them, and they're doing it. Um, so you can also gift your ideas to others. Great question, Deanna. Thanks for asking that. Any other questions? All right, and Sabine, I see your hand up, but I'm guessing that's from earlier. So if any of you have your hand up, I can't tell. All right. So if everyone could, in the message box, say, I'm good, Elizabeth, let me go, I'll be here next week. So I know you're all still with me, that's great. And I'll be sending the recording out again to everyone who didn't uh, make the call tonight. And then if there is anyone else who you know who'd want to join this call, um, I have another bonus. Uh, just because I'm really excited to have you all. If you want to gift someone to get on this call, uh, we have uh, 60 people registered. And um, if there's someone you think wish should be on this call, you can send them the link to the recording, have them listen to it, and uh, email me and say you want to register them as your guest. All right, so thank you, everyone. And looking forward to seeing you guys for the next couple months, all right? Thank you. Good night.